Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics. And today, I want to talk about conversations. But first I have a question. How many of you guys have difficulties pacing your conversation? You know, sometimes you find yourself doing all the talking and the other person is either really bored or you can tell like they feel kind of neglected because you haven't really engaged them. Or maybe you're on the, uh, on the receiving side of that. And, you know, it, it, it makes for a very awkward conversation. And um, sometimes you can actually uh, lose people, like their interest, because you, you don't know how to pace well. So if that's you, then I think that this, uh, this video is going to be very helpful. And, um, and so let me start off with a quote from Truman Capote. He said, a conversation is a dialogue, not a monologue. That's why there are so few good conversations, due to the scarcity of two intelligent talkers rarely meeting. That's pretty harsh, wouldn't you say? But yet, when we think about it, it's true. How many people out there that you engage in conversation with daily are really good at pacing their conversations? Not many. Maybe you're not, right? That's okay. That's fine. Um, today, <clears throat> what I want to talk to you about is using volleyball as a neural trigger to remind you of how to pace a conversation, right? When you're playing volleyball, there is this bump, set, spike mentality. And for those of you that don't know, right, when the server serves, right, so that would be like when a person... Uh, <coughs> when, when someone brings up a topic in conversation, right? The ball has been served. Now, what the team has to do, the first person who receives the ball, they have to bump it, right? They bump it up, and it goes in the air, and then the next person is supposed to set it, and they set it really close to the net so that the last person can go in and spike the shit out of the ball. And that is what's considered to be a good volley and it's also the way good conversations go, right? There's not just one person who's playing all by themselves, right? You have to bounce, you have to share the wealth, you have to bounce the, the ball over to other people. And, um, and so when you're in a conversation, right, and, the, and the, someone has set the tone and the topic for the conversation, you know, you have to decide, am I going to bump, am I going to set, am I going to spike? What round are we in, right, of this kind of thing? And so um, normally in good conversation, that's the way things go, especially if you're in a group. But even if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you want to you wanna give, you want to take the ball for your turn, then let another person get a chance to hit the ball. Sometimes you're the one who gets to spike it, sometimes you're the one who gets to set it. but And sometimes you're even the one who gets to serve it. But the thing is, you have to play with other people. You have to be a team player. And um, another thing that's analogous to volleyball is in order to get better, you have to play with people who are at a higher level. Maybe part of the reason that your converse skill, your, huh, here I go, maybe part of the reason that your conversation skills aren't quite up to par or they could be improved upon, which everybody's can be um, is because you're you're playing in the B league when you need to be playing up in the A league you're playing junior varsity instead of varsity right maybe you're not quite there yet but until you start practicing with those people who play at that level you're never going to be able to to uh, compete at that level the same thing holds true to conversations if you're always holding conversations that are at a lower level and with people who are not very good conversationalists then those bad habits are going to kind of infect you like a disease on the other hand if you if you find people who are good conversationalists and you engage them in conversation every once in a while it's gonna it's gonna wear off on you and that that, that that's not just in everyday life like <clears throat> you could take a speech class you could join Toastmasters there's a lot of things like that you could also Go on YouTube like you are right now. 
and look for people who are great conversationalists. Look for tips and tricks. And then don't take everything because not everything's going to work for you. Everybody has their own style. Find the things that work for you and incorporate them into your repertoire and use them as you feel appropriate. That way it comes out the most organic, the most natural way possible. But uh, anyways, um, think about it today. What are the things that you could do today that could set you in a, in a, in a path that where you could de start developing your conversational skills, right? Um, and it's all those things that we talked about. And just identify one or two that you could do today. And then maybe one or two that you could do throughout the week that could help build those skills. And then as they build, look for other opportunities to grow and reach your full potential. But until next time, you guys take it easy.